In this lesson, we're going to talk about the log laws, which are really just the exponent properties that you know rewritten in the notation of a logarithm. So to begin, let's look at the criteria for each of the laws. We're going to let b be the base of a logarithmic function where b is greater than zero and b is not equal to one. And then we're gonna let m and n be positive numbers. So the first log law is this one here. And it says the log base b of a product, m times n, is the same thing as log base b of n plus log base b of n. And this rule is the product property of exponents. Remember when you multiplied the two bases, you had to add the exponents? And these log base b of m and log base b of n are actually the exponents. Remember the logarithmic function spits out the exponent, so if I'm gonna multiply two things, then what happens is I end up having to add the exponents. So I'm going to prove this particular log law, and it's actually going to be the only one that I'm going to prove because I'm going to ask you to prove the others in class. So to do this proof, we are going to let log base b of m equals x and log base b of n equals y. And that's partially because I don't want to write all that stuff out over and over again. Now if I let x be that log base b of m and let y be base b log of n, I can conclude that b to the x equals m and b to the y equals n by the definition of a logarithm. Now I can multiply m times n and I get b to the x times b to the y because it's really, remember, the product rule. And the product rule says that if I multiply the same base, all I have to do is add the exponents. Now I am going to look at this statement, mn equals b to the x plus y, and I'm going to do some work on this. And the work I'm going to do is apply log base b to both sides to get x plus y out of the exponent. Now after doing that, I have one step left. Because if you remember the property of composition, this is base b logarithm, of b to some power. Remember, by definition, the logarithm is an exponent. So this expression here is just the exponent that b is raised to, so it's x plus y. So I have log base b of the quantity mn is equal to x plus y. So now I go back and I remember what x was and what y was. And those are log base b of m plus log base b of n. So I have proven by substitution that log base b of m times n is log base b of m plus log, place, log base b of n. Now if you recall the other basic exponent properties, we have the quotient rule which says I have to subtract the exponents. So if I'm taking the log base b of a quotient, then I can split that up into subtraction. So log base b of m minus log base b of n. The third and final exponent property we had was the power rule, where you raise an exponent to a power. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking log base b of m raised to the kth power. And remember, if you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. Well, remember, log base b of m is really an exponent that is being raised to a power, and so I just have to multiply. So I can take that k out and make it a multiplication of log base b of m. And this is the power rule equivalent of the log laws. Now let's apply these log laws and see how we can use them and how they can be beneficial. So first let's do this exercise where I take a logarithm and I want to use the log laws to separate it out. So I want to have a log base 8 of Q and a log base 8 of R. And you're going to see 
where I can use this a little bit later. So I need to take this expression and use my exponent properties to expand it out. So I see that q to the fourth and r to the seventh are multiplied together. So I can use the product rule and write log base eight of q to the fourth plus log base eight of r to the seventh. I have one more log law that says if I'm raising it to a power, it's the same thing as multiplication. So I have four times uh, log base eight of q plus seven log base eight of r. And this is that expression expanded out in terms of log base eight q and log base eight of r. So now in this last example, this last example is kind of like a throwback example back to the past pre-calculator days when you couldn't just get a piece of technology and type in log 16 over 25 and get an answer. You had to use these things called CRCs, which were filled with tables. And the table would have like log four and log five and log six and log seven to a couple of decimal places. And then you had to use these log laws in creative ways to figure out what expressions like log to the 16 over 25 were, or you had to use interpolation. Now, I don't need to interpolate anything here um, because I've just been given these two values. So what I need to think about is, can I turn a 16 and a 25 into stuff involving fours and fives? And I chose this rather obvious example because you can look at 16 as four squared and you can look at 25 as five squared. And so now we can look at our log laws and realize, oh, hey, I have a quotient. So I can use the quotient rule and subtract. And then, oh, hey, I have the power rule. So I can rewrite it like this. Now I have decimal approximations of log 4 and log 5. So I can substitute those in. So it's 2 times 0 0.60 minus 2 times 0 0.70. And if I just simplify, I get negative 0 0.2. So that's what the log of 16 over 25 is approximately equal to. And actually, I should make these approximates. Now I can also use these log laws to help me solve equations. So if I see this expression, I know that I can combine these two logs because they're of the same base into a single expression that is gonna be six times x plus two because addition, remember, translates to multiplication. And now I have to get rid of the log, so I'm gonna rewrite this as an exponent. Remember, this is the base of my exponent. The log gives me the actual exponent, and this is what it is equal to. And this gives me a simple linear equation. So I have 27 equals 6x plus 12, and then 6x is equal to 15, and then I need some space. So x is equal to 15 over 6, which is the same thing as five halves. And then of course I have to go back and check to make sure it works. And five halves plus two is within the domain and we should be fine. Now we come to the final example where we see why we have logs at all. Because if I look at this expression, four to the three x equals five, I can't really convert four and five to be of the same base. That's not at all easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a base and take the log of both sides. Now I'm gonna use the common log or base 10. So I have log of four to three X power equals log of five. Now I have to get this three X out of the exponent and by just taking the log of both sides, I haven't done that yet. So what I have to do now is get it out of the exponent. 
And the way to do that is to use the power rule. So I have to take 3x out. So I get 3x log 4 is equal to log 5. And now I treat logarithm like it's a number, because it is. Log 4 is just a number. So I'm going to divide both sides by log 4. So I get 3x equals log 5 over log 4. And then I just have to divide both sides by 3. And I get x equals log 5 over 3 log 4. And this is the exact value of x in this equation. And of course, from here, you can find some decimal approximation with your calculator. But this is how we solve equations where x is in the exponent.